It was September 29, 2020. I was just in my studio, it was a normal day. And I opened up YouTube. Casey had a new upload. Sharing the truth about our marriage. Ooh, gossip. Click. I was absolutely blown away by the production aspect of this seemingly normal sequence of Casey and Candice buying a sandwich. How's your sandwich, lady? It's so good. Let's dive in. Drone shot. Let's note here that Candice is driving, not Casey. See, she's wearing the white t-shirt. He must be flying the drone in the passenger seat. Cool. Also, telephone cables everywhere. Kind of stressful. So we've got another drone shot here. It's just another angle. Straightforward. Now this is where it gets interesting. We've got our third drone shot where we have some traffic and a parallel park, even though there's plenty of easy spots around the back. The shot looks way better like this. Totally get it. Wait, where are we going? Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. As a viewer, this feels wonderful. As a filmmaker actually producing this, quite a lot has happened in this short five, six seconds of a sequence. So from this shot to this shot, Casey has just moved the drone, right? Simple. Wrong. So in the second shot, Casey's actually the one that gets out of the driver's side. So what actually happens is after this shot, Casey and Candice swap places, then they get out of the car again, pack away the drone, then they both get back in the car, Casey gets the handheld camera and then exits the vehicle for a third time. Door opening, and then the shot of Candice. Okay, 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 can we just pause for a minute and just appreciate that? Wait, where are we going? Johnny's French too? Yeah. He knows where they're going. I think what he's doing here is setting up a question for the viewer, knowing that Candace will answer it. It's so much better than just dead air. Saying something is always better than saying nothing. 24-7, we could come here late night. Do you know how close that shot is? She's probably very, very, very used to it, so it works for them. But honestly, imagine trying to relax and someone's just like... Now my best guess is that at this point, Candace gets a menu whilst Casey sets up the next shot. And then they do the walk towards the queue. Casey then gets the camera, they go back to the same corner, and they do the walk again. But this time with a simple question. What are we getting? Hot pastrami on a French roll. Do you know what's interesting? Sometimes, ooh, energy. Often the questions don't actually need to have that much like substance in them. Sometimes it's just like, how's your sandwich lady? It was good. It's so good. But somehow it's interesting with Casey's videos. I don't know how he does it, but it is. Okay, so they're standing in the queue, pointing at the menu, all good. We've got some B-roll, cutaway shots. And quite a lot of them. I don't know exactly when he would have got these, but probably my best guess would have been when they were waiting for their order. Which would kind of make sense why the next shot is Candice sat waiting. We see them ordering the sandwich. This shot is not a crop into the previous shot. This is actually a lens shift. You can see the background has got softer. It's a lens shift. As a viewer, it keeps your brain moving. He moves the camera around for giving the change. This is your order number right there, okay? okay. It's a lot, isn't it? Okay, so we've got way more B-roll here. Sandwiches being made. Probably all filmed with the earlier B-roll. This is such a close-up that my best guess would have been he had another lens in his backpack. So, at the same time as all these B-roll shots, Casey is getting the van ready for the next sequence. We know this because when they pick up the food in the next shot, you can see the van is already set up with a blanket. Bingo. Another thing about this shot, Casey asks, We're 11, right? Yes. Thank you. I think he probably knows he's 11, but he also knows that if he didn't have that audio, he's gonna have nothing else over that clip other than music. Saying something is always better than nothing because you can always take out the audio, but you can't really add it in. Are you guys starting to see what I mean here? This is insane. Okay, so from here to here, Casey asks Candice to just wait a sec with the food. He whacks the camera down in the van, and then they both walk into frame together. With this kind of casual conversation, it's brilliant. No, see, they, they dip it, and the pastrami is dipped in some sort of liquid. You can see here that Casey actually looks at the camera and decides to swap places with Candice, despite Candice already laying out the drinks. Now, one of three things happen here. Number one, Casey knew that Candice gave him the wrong drink. So that's one option. Number two, Casey looks at the camera and the f Do you know what? I just realized what it was. 
the swivel screen is on the right hand side of the camera. So Casey looks at the camera and then realizes you can't see the shot, so they swap places. Kobe! The funny thing is, is the swap is actually better than no swap. It's something happening, it's keeping you engaged. If for some reason they had to do it again, doing it that way is actually better than doing it the correct way. Wow, this, this is some good stuff, guys. This is good. B-roll, fix, wide, easy, good, cool. How's your sandwich, lady? It's so good. Okay, so here we've got a casual handheld. Another easy question. Again, like where are my glasses? Again, the question doesn't matter. And neither does the answer. Just keep it simple. Okay, so this shot has got to just be a cropped-in version from the shot before. I think. It's hard to know. We could have ran out and zoomed in the lens a bit. I think it's more likely just to crop in. That means if the final export is in 4K and this shot was a crop in, then technically this shot here will be stretched out pixels. Who gives a f Some technical shit, who cares? Whatever, next. Okay, so the camera here is closer than the earlier establishing shot. It's much more of an intimate shot. We're ready for some detail around what we clicked on the video for. So, I was like dealing with DMV stuff earlier. And I didn't have the right paperwork, and I completely lost it. I'm pretty sure you said your words were, I'm going to cry. Just as a side note for this shot, Casey likes to move his body in and out from the camera, which if you're using autofocus, will shift the focus to follow your face, which if you move in, will blur the background. And if you're shooting at 4K, you can crop in. It's actually quite a good little hack for not having to shift the lens. I can't do that on my camera because my autofocus is actually broken, so. Yeah. I'm stuck on manual. I imagine the camera was brought forward, so we got a bit of the wide first, brought the camera forward, did a bit more talking, and then got any more B-roll stuff at the end. Okay, so we're leaving. Our drone is back in the air again. Shit, man, those cables. Casey sets the camera up in the car. Then they both get in. Now, he's actually holding the controller for the drone, so unlike when they arrived, I think they only did this once. Then they pull over somewhere, get the drone, back on the road. You've been really harsh on LA. I feel like the pastrami sandwich place is a big turnaround. Yeah, food makes a big it's difference. It's like a big pivot point. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the camera is in the front of the car and we haven't actually seen them from this perspective yet, which is nice because it's something new. The topic of conversation here is good because it's actually linking the sandwich to the marriage. Sam, smam, smam ridge. And it's setting us up for the remainder of the video. Okay, so that's the sequence I wanted to cover. You can go on his channel and watch the remainder of the video. I don't know why, but that sequence just, it just, it stood out. It stood out to me as like, this is a weird shot. I feel like it's a very natural story about getting a sandwich, but how that's actually made. And as filmmakers, you know, we're interested in that kind of stuff. We actually, if we want to tell stories like that, the real side of actually doing that is quite important. So that's what I wanted to do in this video is try and get some of that across. I know, I know that like telling a story like this, it is partly an illusion. So, yeah. Hmm. Casey's job, and all of our jobs, is to tell stories the best we can and make you feel something. Filmmaking and storytelling is about creating something that can't be 100% authentic. It can feel authentic to watch, but the experience of actually filming it isn't the same as the, what you see as a viewer. We have the viewer's perception of buying that sandwich. Then we have the reality of telling that story, which is basically everything I've described in this video. The experience we had watching Casey buy this sandwich is not the same experience that he had making it. It can't be because he was thinking about how to tell this story. And what he's doing here is really hard. It's unscripted, it's unplanned. He's thinking this stuff up as he goes and then cutting it together into a fluid story in post. It's amazing. He said in the video, but on days like today, and I make light of it in the video, but I was having a proper meltdown. And she was like, there to catch me. And she did catch me, and she caught me with a pastrami sandwich, and it made everything better, and it made me appreciate marriage. And this leaves me with just one thought. Was this really about the sandwich, or was it just about making something? <laughs>